What is up, Red Nation? I'm your host, Cockmine Douche Star. Let's get right into the video! HBO has just released another video to signal off the new season of Thrones, and this time it includes a couple of new scenes, and some of it are extended to what we've seen before. Now, before I begin the video, let me just get some things out of the way. Some of you might be confused about the title of the video being the fourth trailer, but to me, this is the fourth trailer to season six, because I'm counting the March Madness video as a trailer. Also, I want to give History Buffs a big congrats on his channel reaching 100,000 subscribers. Nick Hodges, who I consider a good friend of mine, just got to that big milestone and I have to thank you guys for helping him reach it. When I first found his channel, he had around 2,000 subs, and when I showed you guys his channel content, that number jumped to 11,000 and kept growing. So thank you guys for showing him some love. Now with all that out of the way, let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so the new trailer is around 30 seconds long, but it does feature some new scenes. And the first one I noticed was Tyrion with Varys and how some of the Miranese people are running away. As usual, it looks like the Sons of the Harpy are still causing trouble. One of the big questions I have is how Tyrion will handle this trouble, because Marine is vastly different from King's Landing, so he'll have to change up his tactics a bit. One thing I've been wondering about is... Will he get help from the new Red Woman regarding the Harpy problem? And if he does, will Varys stand beside him? In Season 3, Episode 1, we find out that Varys hates magic because someone cut off his cock and balls for a kind of magical ritual. I can't help but wonder if Varys will actively work against the new Red Woman who shows up in Marine. Also, speaking of Red Priest, thank you guys for bringing this to my attention, but it's been confirmed that Thoros of Mir will be returning to the show. For those of you who don't remember, he is the male Red Priest we saw in Season 3 who brought back Beric and Dondarrion after his fight with the Hound. Now that Thoros is back, the Lady Stoneheart hype is raging on. The next scene we get is one of the Targaryen Kingsguard drawing their swords on who we believe is Ned Stark and his companions. Now, some of you thought that the knights in the Targaryen Sigil on their breastplate could have been Rhaegar, but now that we see another guy standing there with the same thing, chances are they are Targaryen Kingsguard, as I've said before. For those of you wondering why their armor looks so different than the Kingsguard we've seen before, well, mainly because it was a different time and a different king. The Targaryens had their own design for the Kingsguard, and when Robert took over as the new king, I'm sure they had to redesign them. Something I've noticed is that many Targaryen supporters will wear this dragon symbol on their armor, the most notable one being Jorah Mormont. The one thing I will say that I'm a little angry about is the fact that we're probably not getting Arthur Dane or any of the other cool Kingsguard. You see, this scene takes place in a vision that Bran is having about the past during the reign of Mad King Ares, and he had some of the coolest and best Kingsguard of all time, and some of them were in that infamous Tower of Joy battle. One of which was Arthur Dane, who had a sword called Don, which was rumored to have been forged from a fallen star, and it basically looks like a lightsaber. I don't really see him or his sword in this, but hopefully he's the third one off screen. Now, the next scene we get is of the Night's King, and behind him is his army. I don't see his horn slash weapon anywhere, so he probably set it down somewhere to stare intently at something. Now, I really hope the show isn't about to start the final battle this year, and will save it for the end of next season. They made it clear with these trailers that the White Walkers will be prevalent throughout the entire season, but I wonder if this is just for hype, or if the Walkers really will appear in more episodes this time around than in previous ones. What I mean by that is, up until now, they've only shown up in maybe one or two episodes per season, so I wonder if the trailer constantly showing them off means that the final battle will premiere this season or next. I really don't want it to start this season, to be honest, because when it does, that means we won't be able to see more of the other storylines conclude, and everything will be in a rush to resolve itself so everyone can face the walkers. A new and important character is about to appear this season, and it feels like so late in the game that he's arrived, that I want the show to stick around a bit longer and postpone the final battle, just so he has more to do. The other slightly new scene is of Daenerys getting whipped by a Dothraki rider. Now, I haven't really touched on this much, but Daenerys this season will be coming to a familiar place, and they won't be killing her, but she'll likely serve as Dosh Kaleen in the Dothraki city of Vast Dothrak. What that means is she'll be a part of the Council of Crones, which is run by the Widows of Dead Cows. We saw them in Season 1, Episode 6, and they tell of the stallion who mounts the world, and that Danny's son will be this person. They're the woman behind her as she eats the horse heart in Season 1. We also get a semi-new scene with Jaime being surrounded by the followers of the Faith when he's conversing with the High Sparrow. It almost seems pointless to include this because we know Jaime gets out of it okay. If you saw the last trailer, then you know he gets out of it just fine because we see him riding with the Lannister army. I'm going to go ahead and assume that Jamie is there to get answers from the High Sparrow and also get Marjorie back. 
I don't think the Zombie Mountain will be going on his killing spree just yet, as we saw in the previous trailer, and I assume Cersei will be waiting for Jaime to leave the city before she orders the slaughter of the sparrows. Judging by how long her hair is, you can probably assume that it's been less than 14 days since the end of Season 5. The one thing about Jaime and Cersei that I really want to see is if their relationship were start to fall apart after Marcella's death. In the book, something like this happens, and it leads to an amazing scene with Jaime reading a letter from Cersei urging him to come back to King's Landing. And, I won't spoil it, but what he decides to do made me love the character so much more. And next we have, oh god no. Why, why, why are you doing this, showrunners? Have you not tortured us enough with shitty dialogue and pointless scenes? <sighs> well, I guess Ilaria and the Crab Snakes are back. I guess they'd have to be, you know, like... Duran sent his only son with Jamie and Marcella to King's Landing, and Marcella dies on the way there. I'm really curious to see what happens with Tristane and how that'll play out. Needless to say, it'll be a very awkward boat ride, but I really can't see what more House Martell has to offer. They've completely botched the amazing twist that Duran could have unleashed. Would it have been cool if we found out that Duran was the one who sent the threat to Cersei in Season 5 and showed his true allegiance while doing so? It would have been so great, but of course it sucked. I really do hope this time around that they actually give Alexander Siddig more to do and show us how much of a badass Duran Martell can be. Now, this one scene I've been avoiding because I just had nothing to say about it. It's Melisandre doing what she usually does, get naked because the Lord of Light commands it. I said it before and I'll say it again. If this religion commands you to worship their god by sleeping with hot sexy redheads, then Lord bless me with your light. But something about this part in the trailer really confuses me. Her sad expression, let's all be honest, there are two things in the world that makes her happy, and that's getting naked and burning people. But here, she just looks like a little, she just looks a little sad, and I'm wondering why. Hmm. I sure hope the traitors of the Night's Watch aren't going to try anything on her, and if they are, I wonder if she'll use some of that magic to kill them. I can't see Melisandre as much of a fighter more than I see her as a femme fatale type of person. It would be cool to see her get in on the fight like we saw with Davos and the Loyalists in that preview clip. But other than those scenes and the one quick shot of Sansa hiding from the Bolton soldiers, there wasn't much. My favorite trailer is still the last one we got for all that it showed. Once again, HBO didn't give us a good quality trailer, but some of you have theorized that it's for a good reason. One of which is to hide the appearance of Jon Snow and even Stannis. Oh yeah, you heard, you heard me correctly. I received a couple of screen caps from you guys who believe that Stannis is right here, and I can understand why you would think that. Not only did we not get a full death scene for him, but the blurry guy in the screen cap kind of looks like he's wearing Stannis' breastplate armor topped off with that short haircut. But as always, leave your thoughts below. Do you think Thoros is coming back? And does that mean we'll get Stoneheart? Brienne and Jaime will be in the Riverlands, so it's entirely possible. Also, do you guys think we'll be seeing Arthur Dane? My guess is that he's probably not too important for the show to cast him. Oh, and just a reminder, this Sunday, the first episode premieres, and I will be on Phil the Issues Guy Live podcast, where we'll be discussing the episode. It'll be one of the first ones I do, and you'll have a chance to talk to me live in the chat or on the phone. I'll leave a link in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Baba Booey.